We're getting closer and closer to the Culture Proof Conference 2024, and we could not be more excited. Yes, it's a great time for the whole family, a great time of ministry, mothers, fathers, uncles, aunts, grandparents, <laughs> everybody, the kids. We have uh, something for them as well. Of course, we have the Culture Proof Kids, Culture Proof Teens. They're going to have some great speakers. It's going to be led by our Maria Hamilton, the third, the third. <laughs> and also Mark and Amy Warren. And so, That's right. man, the kids are going to be equipped and you can have some great discussions and conversations with them as you head back home. We are so excited. This year's conference is hosted by Faith Baptist Church in Bartlett, Tennessee. When registration opens, you will be among the first to know. If you go to cultureproof.net, make sure you join our email list because we are going to blast out open registration yes. to that list first. If you are a part of that email list, you will be among the first to register. And um, rumor has it that there's a special treat in involved for those who register early. So stay wow. connected, cultureproof.net, cultureproof.net. We're super excited about our guests who are all joining to talk about one thing, mm. resisting the cultural resisting trends it. that yes. rival the truth. Yes. We're going to be talking about the ways that we can remain culture-proof from mm -hmm. scientific apologetics, biblical apologetics, cultural apologetics. Yes. How do we live in this world as faithful followers of Christ? We're going to target every age group, so make sure you show up and bring your entire family. Yes, we're going to have a great lineup of speakers, which you'll be able to view their bios on the website, cultureproof.net. Once you go on, Abraham Hamilton III, Miki Addison. We're going to have Dr. Jason Lau, Dr. Kathy Cook, and others. It's going Dr. To be great. Renton Rathbun, Dr. Lee Brand. We are super excited. Dr. Taryn Dames. Mm -hmm. I feel like by next conference, I'm going to also have my doctorate just because <laughs> it kind of flows. Anyway, hey. we're super excited about what the Lord is doing, and we want you to join us. The Culture Proof Conference has happening July 18th through the 20th at Faith Baptist Church in Bartlett, Tennessee. Stay connected because more information about that is rolling out just around the corner. You're going to find that at cultureproof.net, cultureproof.net. Make sure you join the email list. We can't wait. Thanks for checking out Culture Proof. I'm Miki. And I'm Will. And today we're doing something just a little bit different. Um, you'll probably have to leave us a comment and let us know if you like this. Um, it's just an attempt to uh, discuss some of the stories that I read, but we don't turn it into like a podcast episode, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I was thinking we could do like a news haul on Fridays. Like just, I read a lot of news stories, okay? And, but I don't always talk about them. Yeah. Um, but some of them are interesting, but I just don't know how to necessarily categorize them or like to work an entire episode around them. Mm -hmm. So they become just like a collection of news stories, yeah. right? Um, and so I want to throw those out at you okay. and have a discussion around that. All right. um, and, and hopefully our listeners will find it interesting. Again, if you do... Let us know in the comments or, you know, give it a five star rating uh, if you like the Friday news haul. Uh, I have in mind how people do like these shopping trips mm -hmm. and then they talk about these great hauls that they got and mm -hmm. then they kind of just work their way through. Uh, now, again, listen, <laughs> these are not going to all. Well, they're maybe it's not like a news haul, like maybe <laughs> because you think of something that makes you happy when you. Oh, great haul. These are just stories that, you yeah. know, came across our desk in a week that we didn't get to. So we're going to get to them on Friday. Before we do that, though, I want to let our listeners know about the BJU Press Homeschool uh, online party that's happening April 15th through the 19th. This is an opportunity for you to connect with other homeschoolers and to get valuable information. Maybe you've got some questions. There's something about the community um, when you've got a healthy community, right, that you can be a part of where you learn and grow together. And so for um, free. 99 <laughs> for free price. 99 you, you can join the bju press homeschool um online party april 15th through the 19th engaging speakers and presentations you can win prizes and connect with other homeschoolers all across this country you can learn more by going to homeschoolhelp.com slash party that is homeschoolhelp.com slash party you can click on the links there and learn all you need to know I probably had you at free 99. <laughs> okay. You ready for our first news story? Okay. All right. Go. So this one is from a life site news, uh, nationally funded database, uh, 
classifies Students for Life as a terrorist group. Mm. Mm, not surprising. Uh, a University of California Berkeley law professor said that if the researchers in question want to be taken seriously, they should reconsider their definition of terrorism. All right, here's a story. A government-funded radicalization database has labeled Students for Life of America a terrorist group promoting, I'm sorry, prompting criticism from terrorism experts. Wow. Okay. That's great, right? Because <laughs> if you know what terrorism is, then students protesting the taking of innocent life does not fall into that not category. Not at all. I mean, yeah. that's that's pretty crazy uh, that you have that because uh, <laughs> they're just they're just standing up for, for life. We yeah. knew people who were in Students for Life and, yes. you know, that organization uh, they're not terrorists. It's amazing. But, you know, but that's what they tend to do. They tend to try to label, you know, uh, people who are not in their same mindset or mm -hmm. mind frame as terrorists, as yes. ones who are trying to like do harm. Yep. But it's the opposite. Yeah. A while back, I remember it was homeschoolers. Yes. It was those who go to church, you know, weekly <laughs> and really believe that the Bible is authoritative. Uh yeah, yeah. It always. Let me let me give you a little more information mm -hmm. here. The College Fix reported this earlier this week that Students for Life of America appears under a terrorist group label in the raw data set of the University of Maryland's Profiles of Individual Radicalization in the United States. Wow. That is absurd. That is absurd. And this goes back to 2020 when there were a few students who were arrested because they were attempting to chalk outside mm -hmm. of a Planned Parenthood clinic that Black preborn lives matter. Hmm. They were chalking that on the sidewalk. They were arrested. So this organization says that they are terrorists. Wow. So, I mean, when, when organizations like this put you on their list, you know, like I know some organizations that it, it matters because people look at those organizations and say, oh, well, they have the, these folks on their hate list or mm -hmm. on whatever list it is. But so does this really matter? I mean, I was if, if I'm a part of an organization like that, I'm yeah. taking that as, you know, just almost like a badge of honor. I like, know. you know, it's like, yeah. man, we are doing something right because the people who are radical, you know, and you want to stop to, us. Yeah, yeah, want to kill babies and stuff like that. They are calling us this, but we know who we are. So I think they should take it and say, like, well, man, that's who you guys think we are. We know who we are. We're going to continue on with our mission. Yeah, here's something I think is really good. National security expert, uh, a woman named Elizabeth Newman, who joined the Department of Homeland Security uh, in 2017, denounced the labeling of Students for Life of America as a terrorist group in mm -hmm. a conversation with The Fix. Uh, quote, they made an error and they should correct it. <laughs> they should. <laughs> Isn't that great? Like, I mean, just... Short and to the point, right? Yeah. You think about vandalism that does not fall into the category or the description of uh, someone being a terrorist. Yeah, I mean, they should uh, correct it, but they probably won't, you know, um, because they feel like they have the right to do that type of thing. They mm -hmm. have the upper hand. They can put you on their list and, you know, put you on blast as yeah. being something that you're not. Yeah, I feel like Christians should start some type of list. <laughs> I mean, and it doesn't even need to be like legitimate. It doesn't need to have its roots in anything that's like valid. It just needs to be our list. And we just start adding people to it just <laughs> at will, you know, yeah. and then see how they like it. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for this? Yes. Why is Gen Z surprisingly susceptible to financial scams? This was an article mm. out last month from Time Magazine. And I actually, I looked at this article and then I saved it because I thought this was really interesting. You know, a lot of what we discuss when we look at Gen Z uh, has to do with worldview and, you know, what they do with God. Um, but this is interesting and in looking at the, the I don't know, the technology mm -hmm. that Gen Z has grown up in mm -hmm. and how it has made them more susceptible to being scammed online. Hmm. Um, not so much for the boomers. They always leave out Gen X. I, I feel like they skip right over us mm -hmm. and go to baby boomers. And I understand it but I don't like it. Here's the story. Let me just get into it, okay? Gen Z is more than three times as likely to fall for online scams compared to boomers. Experts weigh in on the reasons why. The internet reacted in horror last month at the story of how, listen to this, a financial advice columnist at The Cut lost 
$50,000 in a scam. Mm. Right. The financial advice columnist lost wow. $50,000 in a scam, but for many young adults, the tale may be uncomfortably familiar. While younger, digital savvy folks may be adept at using the internet, mm -hmm. Gen Z, born between 1995 and 2012, is more than three times as likely to fall for online scams compared to baby boomers. And that's a report yeah. that's out in 2023. Well, to me, it makes sense because they're online more than the boomers. Yes. I mean, that's exactly right. So that makes sense. I mean, it's not like a, I don't feel like that's like a deep dive into like, mm -hmm. why? I think it's just because they have grown up with the, they internet. live there. Yeah. They live yeah. there. They know how to navigate it, mm. you know, and I would think that Gen X would be similar to Gen Z in a way, mm. because for maybe in our childhood, it wasn't like, you know, mm -hmm. this, but there's a big part of Gen X that have been raised on, yeah, you know, the computer and online and stuff like that as well. So it's just because the boomers don't use the computer that's as right. much or not online as much, you know, and on the internet and stuff like that. that that's right. That's simple reason. This, this, are, and you're spot on. This article says that the older generations are going to fall for the standard phishing schemes through email <laughs> and telephone, mm -hmm. um, you know, things like that. But for Gen Z, they do everything online and everything is sort of like digital, yeah. you know, at a moment's whim. And uh, and they live in a space where, you know, click here if you want to earn money doing nothing. And so they, they trust that. In mm -hmm. fact, according to this uh, time piece here, it says that Gen Z is more likely to believe things that they read on social media than they are to believe actual like credible news sources. Mm. I don't know what they mean when they say credible news sources, right. but... Um, and so I was thinking about this and I wanted to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you, what, what have you found to be, and I have my answer, by the way, mm -hmm. what have you found to be tempting that you encountered online mm -hmm. and you thought that's a scam, but, but it was very convincing. You know mm. what I mean? So I'll give you an example. Okay. Here's how I've, I've almost, because here's the thing. Sometimes it only takes you clicking on a link. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, oh, I just thought of something else where I actually like it. Oh, OK. Well, two things then. here's okay. my first thing. My first thing is when I get a text message from FedEx mm -hmm. telling me that they tried to deliver my yeah. package, <laughs> but but they couldn't. And right. that I needed to click the link <laughs> for further instructions. Mm -hmm. So the first time I got that text message, no joke, no exaggeration, mm -hmm. I was like, Oh my goodness. Okay. They tried to deliver my package <laughs> and I almost clicked the link almost <laughs> like I was. And then, you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to give credit to God because in this moment I was just like, Oh, I want my package you keep right. going toward the light, like a bug. Right. Um, but then like this thought occurred to me, wait a minute, what package? Right. <laughs> like, what am I waiting for? Right. You know what I mean? And, and then I stopped for a second and I was like, <laughs> I'm not waiting for anything. Mm. There's no package that I'm waiting for. And so of course I delete the text message, yeah. but that was, that was one of those things yeah. that I was about to click on it. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I have another one and I didn't think of this one earlier. I got a phone call. Remember mm -hmm. I got a phone call uh, telling me <laughs> what, what was the, I, I forget what they were telling me that I had some unsettled debt from my college years. Yeah, yeah. You remember that? Uh-huh. And I was like, wait, what? No way. Like, I, I don't have, what? No, there's no way. Like, because we actually monitor our name and our socials and all of that, you know, credit reporting. Like, you want to make sure that no one's stolen your identity in the last, like, 30 days. And so I was like, there's no way. Mm. Well, you know, you end up calling them back. Right. And it's a, it's a scam. It was horrible. Yeah. I talked to her though. I and I told her, I said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I did, didn't I? I mean, you, you were there. I, 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 I was like, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. How dare you? Anyway. Yeah. 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 No, I think the, a similar thing with the FedEx thing. I I've gotten that. And <laughs> you know, it's like, man, you know, then you have to think of, well, what am I waiting for? Or, you know, why do they want me to click this? Like, you know, it's like. Mm -mm. Yes. So yes. yeah, but I think with me it would be like um, remember like there was a particular brand of shoes that I like that we were like oh. man it was like mm. cheap. Yes, you get them from here. 
you know, and it's like, man, really? Yeah. Really? And uh, I think those type of things for me can be tempting, like when it's like a deal, a deal. or something. Yeah. You know, and it's crazy because they're, you know, they're tracking you. They know what you like. They right. know, you know, right. it's like the things will pop up and you're yep. like, man, I, I was just thinking about that. How did yeah. they know? <laughs> yeah. That, man, <laughs> uh, you that's mentioned, so scary. Think, look, you mentioned the conversation and then all of a sudden you see it's like. coming up in your like, phone, like on your news to feed, me. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't know. That's that is so creepy to me. I am not comforted by that at all. You know what I mean? Like, um, oh, most boy. recently, most recently, we were in DC, and I was talking about how beautiful the cherry blossoms were. <laughs> I'm I'm talking to you, yes, on the way back from DC, driving mm -hmm. about how beautiful the cherry blossoms were. Oh my goodness, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> And then, like, the next day, I want to say, in my Facebook feed, there were, like, <laughs> announcements about cherry blossoms. Now, mm. that could be just because, you know, my phone tracked that I was in D.C. I don't mm. know, but I just don't like stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like that's just... <laughs> they know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. No, it's interesting, though, you know, especially when you're, like, a deal hunter mm -hmm. and you, you've got a specialized shoe that's not cheap. Yes. And then you see, and it's like, whoa, but here's the good thing. The good thing was that you shared it with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so because, you know, no, but you're not remembering that. Right. Miki. Wait, 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 wait. No, you shared it with me. And I no. looked into it. No, you were the one that brought my attention to that first. <laughs> you're you like, they have you, you showed me wait, that. First. I showed you the shoes. Yes. I thought you showed no, me the you shoes. You showed me first. Okay. And then I was like, well, but oh. didn't I come back to you and say, I don't think that this yeah. is okay. Okay. So because, okay. yeah, you came back and was like, I don't, you know, like, uh, oh uh, my like, goodness. After I thought about it. Like, uh, I'm like know. Eve with the fruit. <laughs> I like, I like, I saw that it was pleasing to the eye. It was, you know, anyway, but those um, type of that's things. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was like $30 for these. I'm like, Whoa, what you can get those shoes? Oh my goodness. Now that you're saying it's coming back to me. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 you were like, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Because like, you were actually working on something else and I brought the phone to you. <laughs> yes, you are so right about that. Yeah. So, but here's the thing though. You I continued back, though. to look into yeah. it. And I was yeah. like, mm, no. <laughs> I don't know. There's just something about some of the company, mm. even the names of the companies. It's yeah. like, like <laughs> you know, you feel like it's little Benjamin in his basement, just like setting <laughs> right. up his online store for nothing oh you know so anyway okay so the gen <laughs> zers are wow. three times more likely to be scammed online wow. than the older generations mm. so now takeaway though for that is that we need to be watchful we need mm. to pay attention to what our kids are doing and we need to teach them to be discerning and discriminating like mm. they need to you know be able to say no to something or if something mm -hmm. is too good to be true it's probably not true like yeah. we need to tell yeah. them that you know i think about right. Um, how much our kids believe. And I mean, this generation of kids, mm -hmm. they believe what they see on YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so anyway, something else in this time um, article that I thought was interesting with um, AI, the scams have gotten super elaborate and way more convincing. And it's only going to get That's right. Worse. worse or better depending yeah, on if they, you're they're going to do better at scamming. <laughs> right. So, so <laughs> where you fall. More, yeah. more and more real. Like, yeah. yeah. Now yeah. this, yeah, really, really sad. Now this is super sad. Um, this story, 28 year old Dutch woman is scheduled to be euthanized in May because she's depressed and she's sad mm. and doctors or professionals have said that they can't do anything more for her. Mm. This, this really disturbed me. This is from not the B.com. Um, the woman's name is Zoraya Terbeek, I think is how you would say the name, Zoraya Terbeek. She's 28 years old. She's scheduled to die in May because she is, quote, hobbled by her depression and autism and borderline personality disorder. Wow. So she is planning to end her life mm. because medical professionals, if you want to call them that, have said that they've done all that they can do for her. So Terbeek lives in a little Dutch town near the German border. And she once had ambitions, according to this article here, once had ambitions to become a psychiatrist, but she was never able to muster the will to finish school or start a career. 
She said she was hobbled by her depression and autism and borderline personality disorder. Now um, she's tired of living. Wow. wow. She's tired of living and it's been approved and she is going to end her life. That's crazy. This so, is something that is actually growing um, in the Netherlands. Yeah. You know, immediately what comes to my mind is, you know, the thief comes, you know, to kill, steal, and destroy. Like, that's what the enemy comes for. You know, like, I, I just feel like that's demonic, of course. I, I feel like, you know, um, mm -hmm. depression and that it's, it's just something that the enemy uses and now she's wanting to end her life. That's exactly what he, he wants, mm. you know? So it's like, yeah, you know, do away with it. Yeah. Like kill yourself. Like, you know, or where she is, you, you know, uh, you deny it. Like, mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's a sad, sad thing, you know, but I believe in the power of God to break stuff like yes. that, Yes. you know, but if she, if she has no, you know, relationship with God or anything mm -hmm. like that, man, that, that has taken over. You know, and up uh, and but the power of God is available to break those type of chains, Amen. you know. But this is it has this has the enemy all, all over, over it. it. For sure, all for sure. It. You know, it's interesting. I thought about something as I was reading this article. There's one, um, let's see, uh this paragraph says she recalled her psychiatrist. Now listen to this, okay? And and then I'm gonna well, she recalled her psychiatrist telling her that they had tried everything and that there's nothing more that we can do for you. It's never going mm. to get any better. Wow. Now, now think about that. No so hope. that no hope, no hope. And this is just who you are. Right. And so for her though, this is not a pleasant life. Okay. Living with this in inescapable identity is not a pleasant life for her, but it's, there's no hope. It's mm. never going to go away. And so the only solution to her, right, is that she would end her suffering, end right. her life. I, I thought about this in light of the conversation we've been having recently about whether or not people are just always going to be same-sex attracted and they should just adjust to that. They should just, mm -hmm. you know, even though they know they have a knowledge of God, they're in relationship even with the Lord, knowing his righteous requirements, requirements. but we say to them, it's always going to be this way. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's never going to hmm. get any better. Wow. Like I think, man, shouldn't we, I mean, <laughs> there are other deep theological arguments to make, yeah. but isn't there a basic one that says we should at least be different from the world? Yeah, definitely. Like here you have a person who is apart from Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And so the weight of hopelessness comes to rest on her. Right. But for those of us in Christ, I mean... Mm -hmm. We have hope. That, yeah. We have hope and we should um, uh, pray for deliverance, mm -hmm. you know, as those who are in Christ, that, that God will deliver from whatever it is uh, that's oppressing us or whatever, you know. So uh, it's a, that's a that's a very sad story. But again, like you said, the enemy all, is all over that, yes. you know, and, and man, you know, there is power for that stuff to be broken. Amen. Amen. All right. One last story. Now, this one I want to put in the category of you did not need to know this. But again, you know, this is an article that I read. Just All right. so this is this is sort of like um <laughs> I don't know if I should even reveal this, but <laughs> this is one of those, oh Miki, you read articles like that? Like, yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> this is not gonna be um eternally fruitful, okay. right? But it grabbed my attention. All right. And I'm I'm curious about headlines like this. Mm -hmm. Um so I read it and then I thought, you know what, maybe this will be beneficial to some of our listeners. Um, who knows? Okay, here we go. This is the headline. Um, and this is from the end of last month. Okay. Uh, San Antonio river authority issued a plea. Hey, stop flushing those flushable wipes. Ah. <laughs> so now yes. here's why I think this is beneficial <laughs> because there are so many wipes. Uh, I know this is such an uncomfortable, like, <laughs> you know, news headline, but this is where I feel like culture proof is providing you with like a public <laughs> service. Okay. <laughs> so all of the wipes say that they are flushable, that they, right. you know, they're biodegradable and then they're going to break down and all of that stuff. <laughs> uh, the San Antonio river authority is urging customers 
hey, no, stop doing that. Mm. They are not flushable. Um, it doesn't matter what it says on the packaging. It's not okay to flush them. So let me get into <laughs> this into this article here. Yikes. And then we may uh, feel led. You know, we'll just have to be sensitive to reveal our personal experience <laughs> with the non-flushable flushable wipes. Mm. I mean, that's what they are. They're non-flushable flushable wipes. Okay. In a March 26 Facebook post, the agency wrote that wipes are causing, quote, a significant issue at local wastewater treatment plants, mm. uh, blocking pumps and screens that catch debris. Uh, it attached, and by the way, the photos are so disgusting. <laughs> they were in the article. I'm like, uh, oh, <laughs> yuck. you know, anyway, they attached photos of what they called <laughs> accumulations of wipes and all kinds of things being pulled out of the local <laughs> sewer system. Um, and this is what they said, quote, flushing wipes down the toilet, even if it's labeled flushable, can cause sewer backups leading to major damage. Wipes collect in sewer pipes, pumps, and equipment causing clogs and blockages. And so they said, please stop doing this. Um, keep, they even, they give you the steps to remedy your habits. Keep a small waste basket next to your, to <laughs> next to your toilet. Wow. So anyway, I thought this was an interesting article and it could have been because of our experience and just <laughs> learning that even though the wipes say that they're flushable, um, you know, they're not, they're not, and see, they're not. Uh, it just takes a few hundred dollars to get right. a plumber out Come to tell on, you man. that, I Hey, feel like they're wrong for that. Like yeah. can, um, flushable wipe companies be sued? For false look at advertisement. You. Look at you. We live in such false a litigious society. Look at you. Like, why do you want? It's Take like that, I burned to, my they, lip they, on this McDonald's <laughs> coffee. They need to I'm change that on their um because they're lying. Well, or what they could do, what they could do, like how we now have the cups say caution, the beverage you're about to enjoy is extremely hot. They could say flushable wipes if you want to pay a couple hundred, a <laughs> couple hundred every three months. Like it, it could just put that in the fine print because they're not flushable. And <laughs> and when you when you have a plumber come out, you know, twice in a matter of months and and is like, found your problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, how it's anyway. Yeah. Just very, but that, very. Again, but they're, they're wrong for that because the way that they label that is to sell them. You know, people yeah. are like, oh yeah, I would use yeah. these and they're flushable, mm -hmm. but they're not. So they need no. to change that. You know, this but I article, think people are realizing when they have these problems. So I wonder how now that see that would have been interesting to to read information. I wonder how many people have experienced like those kind of like plumbing backups where they had to get someone out because of the flushable wipes. Um <laughs> that would be interesting to learn. I'm I'm kind of <laughs> curious about that. Um, because I think you if really? you've got, I am, I think <laughs> if you've got a sanitation agency saying, please, can we stop with the flushable wipes? There are other people, right? Like just the common yeah. everyday man is probably experiencing this as I, well. I agree. Um, this article goes on. I probably don't even need to read these things, but this article says disposable wipes, baby wipes, wet wipes, which I thought those are all the same things. <laughs> um, paper towels, cloth towels, towelettes, facial tissues, makeup wipes, and the like Wait, are not flushable. Cloth towels? People try to You know, flush? I saw that and I like, did. <laughs> really? Wow. I did wonder, like, like <laughs> you know, I wonder, man. well, how bad does it have to get <laughs> that you're like, you know what, this can't be washed. <laughs> And, and, wait, wait. Uh, and, and, how and bad to flush that? does it have to get? Like a cloth towel. Yeah. I don't know. I Man, mean, so I guess that's happening. Like, I, wow. I wonder just like what goes <laughs> through a person's mind. Oh like that you're just like, you know what? This cannot. <laughs> <laughs> can't, this can't I, be redeemed. Man. We can't save this towel. Ugh. It's got to go. Ugh. And then you just flush it. I don't know. I have I have thrown away things, you know, with, with, with the kids that you're like, you know what? Yeah, mm, we're just it. that's it. We're not even gonna try to <laughs> let's good. not try to redeem it or wash it. Let's just throw it away. Um, but I, I have never thought of like flushing a towel down the toilet. No. I just you know like I don't know. Maybe now mm. I will say this: there's a possibility, there is the possibility that um, you know. Maybe people, maybe it's not towels. Maybe it's uh, reusable diapers. Maybe. What? Maybe. because you can down the toilet? Well, sometimes you can clean them. I've heard moms. I've never used reusable diapers. I've heard that they are great. I just don't have the patience for well, that. I mean, I've. Yeah. I, mm, 
I, I remember that, early yeah, on yeah. getting a walkthrough yeah. by a mom. This is when I was still making like my life choices about how I was going to diaper the children. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, just sweet <laughs> sister in the Lord, very earthy, very earthy, like showing me. Very earthy. Yeah, showing yeah. me the um, reusable diapers Ugh. and how they worked Eesh. and everything, like like demonstrating on her kid and showing me the different types and 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 convincing herself that she was convincing me that this would be the best or one of the best decisions that I would make mm. in diapering our children. And when I saw it, I was like, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not right. going to, mm -mm. mm. no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Oh, you only get leak leaks every once in a, no, mm. I'm not going to. Mm -mm. So anyway, but she also in the, in the course of explaining to me how to use the, you know, Mm -hmm. reusable diapers you can clean them by hanging them in the toilet and flushing them and then really? just put yes like can you see your wife doing no. that okay i am the no. biggest germ folk yes. that you will you, find you are there not are, doing that there there is no way as soon as like first of all Okay, never mind. I know this is taking a turn. You can see why this article grabbed my wow. attention. Now yes. I'm putting you on the spot, right? Uh -huh. I, I pulled my uh -oh. articles. Was there anything that you read this week mm. that you thought, mm, that's interesting. I'm mm. not going to use that, but it did grab my attention. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Let's put me on the spot. Let's see. I have to go back into my memory bank. He's like, there was that Pac-Man article. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I'm just oh, kidding. I'm man. just kidding. It's fine. I don't want to put you on the spot because I had an opportunity to collect the articles well, that um that I found interesting. I have been so. reading some articles because I've been I've been you know wondering Did he? about yeah okay P Diddy thing. I'm Look, like, I wondered if we were going to talk about this, uh, like if we were going to just pretend like and, it's not and, happening. And this is what I've been wondering yeah. because so the last thing I read was that the lady uh, Cassie. His uh, ex girlfriend so or crazy. whatever, yeah. that she um, is, uh, you know, cooperating with the yeah. investigations and stuff like that. So I don't know what all that means. And then there's on the other side, there's another rapper, Fifty Cent, who's been like mocking. Oh my goodness! Diddy and talking about he's putting out a documentary about this stuff. I don't know. It's just, it, but at the same time, mm -hmm. I saw today that P Diddy was just out and about riding a bike, and you know, I'm like, wait. So he's not concerned about this. Like, what is this all about? Like, I don't know. Is it like did he like not do anything? Like, yeah, he's acting like, hey, I'm, I don't you know. know. I this is I, it's just weird. Then you see here T D J S name. Yes. You hear all these different right. people. You know, uh, what a Cuba good. Yes, <laughs> and all there, these people. I'm like, of, yeah, what's mm -hmm. going on? Yeah, and people calling him like. Jeffrey Epstein, the, the, the black, black Jeff. Je you tried to be nice. <laughs> the, the articles I've been reading them too, bro. Like, let's not oh, edit on anyway, site. Yeah. But so they're that's... calling him the black Jeffrey Epstein. I think it is. It's Ugh. man, it's disgusting. And man. you know, um, I don't know. It's... I I just don't understand. So that's probably, yeah. you know, there's no. You yeah, know. you know the Bible says, and and I think part of the reason that for us, I mean, it's you're curious about it because. He is such a well-known figure, right. um, and they're you know obviously raided his house. And it was like my pretty, goodness, um, intense. You know, <laughs> East Coast, West Coast. Right. I mean, put that in a rap song. <laughs> but like, I mean, it, so it's a big deal when right. you've got the Department of Homeland Security. They are yes. not. They are something major happened. Right. Right. Okay, and so and they, what is it? Yeah, like what? It's, yeah. You know, mm -mm. it's not because it. you pulled that tag off your mattress, <laughs> you know, or your pillow. You know what I'm saying? Like it right. do not remove under penalty of law. <laughs> That's not why they show up. Yeah. So definitely something happened. And I think those things will be revealed. But, you know, there I'm thinking of the scripture verse where um, in Ephesians, where the Bible uh, admonishes and warns us to have nothing to do with the unfruitful deeds of darkness, yeah. um, but rather to expose them. You know what I mean? Like yes. it's, it's shameful to even talk about what the wicked do. And I think that's why for Christians, it's difficult to yeah, even like, like kind of process yeah, what kind right. of world this could be right. because it is so far removed from those of us who have been called out of darkness True. into the marvelous light of the Lord uh, being transferred from one kingdom to another. Yes. Um, and I, and I am aware that Lecrae, you know, made some headlines because he talked about attending at least two of oh, those parties. parties. Now I, I will say, look, bro, <laughs> I like, don't bro. understand that. Okay. So again, I could say if, if you said that you went to one, you were invited and you were trying to go into the darkness as a missionary because that was the thing. Mm -hmm. I'm a missionary. Um, okay, but once you saw 
like what was going on. Um, yeah, why are you the second know, time? The second time, I just anyway, that's say. just my that's yeah, my opinion. I'm gonna back off on yeah, that one because yeah. I had a whole like season and he of admitted life. to seeing some bad stuff. Well, you know? lots of people have, so I mean, that's stuff, stuff that's happening so, that yeah. has so I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, what's going to happen. Is this, you know, that's 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 my thing, like so these raids mm-hmm. so what came out of it like yeah. what did yeah. y'all find anything like what you know mm-hmm. yeah so. yeah i think they will probably uh not reveal their hand uh i will say this though they probably and this is just my limited knowledge limited understanding of how these things work but in order to you know execute the type of raid that they executed <laughs> like i mean Crazy. They had to have some existing evidence. Yeah. Like there had to be some something, something. Yeah. you know what I'm saying, that would have given them um, the authority to do that. Yeah. So uh, it remains to be seen. I will say this. It is far better. It is far better. Better than any life that you can imagine. Better than any life that the world can present to mm-hmm. you. It is far better to be in God's family. It is far better to submit to him, to love his law, to love serving him and honoring him in the life that we live. I mean, look, as a, you know, as a Christian, people can say that you are repressed and all of these things. They're not, (laughs) it's not true. Right. But isn't it amazing to know that you don't have to, you know, lie awake in bed at night Mm -hmm. wondering if, Homeland Security will raid your home <laughs> oh my unless you get put on a terrorist list as Uh-oh. a peaceful Uh-oh. citizen. <laughs> then there's that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, when you resist the cultural trends that rival the truth, you remain culture proof. Until next time, Lord willing. God bless.